Thank you for purchasing the new i-1.8 from Banks Power. It's a revolutionary OBD2 gauge that plugs into your vehicle's diagnostic port and can read hundreds of different parameters. It's compatible with all 2008 and newer vehicles and some from 2004 to 2007. This device is plug and play and it can be installed in just a couple of minutes. Simply insert the connector into your OBD2 port and you're good to go. It's also compatible with many popular standalone ECUs, or it can be used without any engine data by utilizing our bank's expansion modules, making it truly a universal device. The iDash fits in almost any gauge hole due to its standard size, 2 and a 16th inch or 52 millimeter. You can pop it into your A-pillar mount or simply stick it into your windshield using the bank's suction cup mount. The four button system allows for very simple and intuitive navigation. And unlike traditional gauges that display just a single value, the i-1.8 is able to display up to five different parameters on a single gauge. With an incredibly extensive data list, you'll be able to read hundreds of different parameters, most of which aren't even available on your vehicle's dashboard. One of the coolest features of this device is its expandability. The i is equipped with a proprietary Banks Bus Communication Network, also known as B-Bus. This allows you to daisy chain up to four i-1.8s together to see even more data at the same time or add an additional control and sensor modules. The i-1.8 also packs a huge data logging punch for such a small package. It's able to record up to 100 parameters at a rate of 10 samples per second directly into a micro SD card. It's able to set custom low and high alerts for almost any parameter that it can read, not just the ones being displayed on its face. And don't forget about the built-in diagnostics capability that allows you to read and clear diagnostic trouble codes. There's even more features packed into this little device, but let's move on to a live demo so you can see it for yourself. Now let's go over the navigation system on the i-1.8. It's equipped with four different buttons. The top right button here is your menu and select button. If you press it once, you'll launch your main menu. From here on out, each time it's a select. To go back a level, press the bottom right back button. If you want to return all the way back to the home screen, simply hold that button down for two seconds. In any of the menus, the up and down buttons here are used to scroll through the options. Next, let's go over how to change the displayed parameter. For this example, we'll change the ambient air density parameter, which is in field 2. To do this, press the menu button, then scroll up to gauge selection, and press select. Now, you'll see each of the fields here. So we'll scroll up to field 2, press the select button. When you plug in the iDash into your vehicle's OBD2 port, it will automatically scan the vehicle for all available parameters and populate a list of viewable data. This will vary from vehicle to vehicle, but on average we're seeing about 60 different parameters per vehicle, with some displaying as many as 90. All of this data is conveniently grouped into different categories so it's much easier to locate what you're looking for. So for this example, let's change this to boost air pressure. To do that, scroll down to the pressure category and press the select button. Here we can see that boost is a second item, so I'll scroll down and press select. And now field two is updated to boost. If you hold the back button, you'll return to the home menu and see your newly configured layout. The i-1.8 is equipped with a variety of different gauges. Each i can be equipped with a different layout ranging from two to five different gauges per screen. To change the layout, press the menu button, then hover over gauge selection and press select. Now at the very bottom, you'll see layout. If we select that, you can see all of the options of the different layouts in the i-1.8. Let's switch it over to the three gauge layout. So I'll scroll up and hover over that and then press select. Now you'll notice three different parameters being displayed on the screen. A very handy feature built into every i-1.8 is the ability to constantly monitor up to 20 parameters and keep a log of minimum and maximum values. To access this log, press the menu button and scroll down to min-max log and press select. Now we can select the maximum log and here you'll see a list of all the parameters that we've been tracking. At any point in time, you can clear all to reset this list back to zero. An important note here is that the log is saved between key cycles, so clearing all is the only way to reset it. You can do the same process for the minimum log. To change the configuration of what's being monitored in the min-max log, go back a level and select Set Parameters. 
Here you'll see a list of everything that's currently being monitored. To add or change something, simply scroll to the field you want to change. For this example, I'll replace RPM and add engine oil at temperature. To do that, select RPM, select change parameter, scroll down to the temperature field and press select. And here you can see that the fourth item is engine oil temperature. If I press the select button, you can see that the parameter has been updated to engine oil temperature. So now that I've added this new parameter, let's go back into the min max log and select the maximum log. Here you can see that the maximum engine oil temperature that I've recorded is 203 degrees F. This is useful information to set custom alerts that we'll go over next. To set a custom alert, go back to the main menu and go to alerts. You can set custom alerts for the fields currently being displayed on the iDash or any of the background alerts that you set up in the min max log. To set up a custom alert for engine oil temp, go into background alerts and then select engine oil temperature. Here, press the select button to set the limit. Here you're able to enable both a low, a high alert, or both. Let's enable the high and change the limit by selecting the high alert value. Here you can pr press the up and down button to change the value or do a long hold to do a rapid scroll. For this example, I'll set it to 200. Now I'll hold back to return to the main menu. Now as you're driving along in your vehicle, anytime the engine oil temperature exceeds a threshold, it'll pop up with a warning like this. And since it's in the background, you'll see the small warning in the upper left corner indicating that engine oil temperature is still above its set limit. This will remain here until the parameter returns to a level under the threshold you set. Also, if the threshold you set is for a parameter currently being displayed on your gauge, and you exceed that alert threshold, you'll see a warning box pop up to notify you. And now that parameter will remain blinking white and red until it returns to a value under the set threshold. Having multiple eye dashes allows you to set up a multi-stage alert. For example, I can set up this first gauge for an engine oil temperature warning at 200F. And on this one, 210, 220, and 230. If you're a true data junkie and the standard min-max log capabilities is not enough for you, we've got you covered with the optional continuous SD card data logging version of the eye dash. With this version, you're able to log up to 100 parameters at 10 samples per second straight to the micro SD card. No other device on the market is as powerful as this or as easy to use. With the supplied 4 gig SD card, you can record over a month's worth of data. If you have multiple iDashes in your system, the one that's connected to the OBD2 port is referred to as primary, and this is the one that handles the data logging. Simply insert the micro SD card into the face of the primary gauge. Here you'll see a notification that the SD card is mounted and ready to be used. To configure the list of parameters being recorded, press the menu button and scroll down to data logging. Here if you scroll down to select parameters, you can see a list of everything that's currently being displayed, highlighted in green. For this example, let's clear all parameters out and configure a new log. All data in the iDash is referred to as bank's parameter IDs, also known as bids. To add a bid to your data log list, select the Add Bids option. Here we can see the different categories. For this example, let's select Temperature. In each category, you can select multiple parameters. To do that, highlight each of the parameters that you want to add and press the Select button. You can repeat this process for multiple parameters. Now that we added the three items, press the back button and return to the data logging parameter list and you can see them populated here. And remember, you're able to record up to 100 parameters, so let's add a few more. Select the add bids again and go through the different categories to add different parameters that you want to monitor. Let's add a couple more pressures, such as boost air pressure and fuel oil pressure. Now when you return back to the list, you can see all the parameters that you've configured. 
To remove a parameter, simply highlight over it and press the select button, and you'll see that it de-highlights. Once you go back and return to the parameters list, you can see that they've been removed. Now that we've told the iDash what we want to record, let's start a new log. To do this, hold down the back button to return home. The shortcut for starting and stopping a data log is holding the down button for two seconds. Additionally, you'll see the blinking green LED here to notify you that you're recording data. While recording, you can use a back button to set a flag. A flag is a marker in a point in time that you can use to identify important events. For example, if you floor it to merge into the on-ramp and your vehicle experiences some engine knock, you can press the flag button to mark the event so you can return to that section of the data log later and get a closer look at what's going on there. Once you finish recording data, simply hold the down button for two seconds to stop data log. So once again, the shortcut for starting and stopping a data log is holding the down button for two seconds. One of the features that sets the iDash apart from anything else on the market is your ability to play back data directly on the iDash itself. So here's how you play back a data log. Press the menu button and scroll down to data logging. If you scroll down to the bottom of the data logging menu, you'll see an option for playback loop mode. By default, your data log will be played back just once. If you want it to repeat over and over again, press select on this option to enable the loop mode. Now scroll up and select start playback. Here you'll see a list of all the data logs you've recorded. On your vehicle, you'll see the model year and VIN instead of unknown. This is especially helpful when you're moving the iDashes from vehicle to vehicle. Now let's select log 13 and press the select button to start a playback. The blinking blue box at the top here indicates that you're currently playing back data. And in playback mode, it's often useful to display your data log time. To do that, press the menu button and go to gauge selection. And let's change short term fuel trim. Scroll up to the diagnostics group and then select time data log. Hold the back button to return home. Now you'll know where you are in time in relation to the recorded parameters. When playing back data, you can use the up and down buttons to skip ahead 5 seconds, or back 5 seconds, or hold it down for 2 seconds to skip 30 seconds at a time. Additionally, you can press the back button to pause the data log, and when paused, the up and down buttons will index 0.1 seconds backwards or forwards, just like so. Great. Press the back button once again to resume playback. To stop the playback, go into the menu system and select data logging, then select stop playback. Now if we hold down the back button, we're in a normal operation mode. If you have multiple iDashes, the primary gauge with the micro SD card inserted to it is used to control all of the data logging functionality. Let's say I recorded 25 different parameters. I can display any of those recorded parameters on any gauge even if they weren't being displayed at the time of recording. For example, as you can see we're still playing back data, but let's say I want to look at boost at this top parameter instead. To do that, I use the selected gauge, go into gauge selection, highlight field 1 RPM, scroll down to the pressure category, and then select boost. Hold back to return home. Even though boost wasn't displayed on this gauge when I recorded the data, I'm able to view it right here. Now that you've got some data recorded, opening it to view on your computer is dead simple. For anyone interested in diving deeper into the data, simply remove the micro SD card from the gauge and insert it into your computer. The data is recorded as a standard CSV file, which is able to be opened in Microsoft Excel or your favorite data analysis software. The iDash comes standard with a customizable shift light. Each gauge can be set independently of each other. You can set a different color and RPM alert for each gauge. This allows you to set up a cool multi-stage shift light.
And you don't need 4 gauges to do this. You can set up a custom shift light with any number of gauges. And the iDash comes standard with a suite of powerful diagnostic tools. To access vehicle diagnostics, press the menu button and then scroll to diagnostics. Then select vehicle. To read your current diagnostic codes, press select on check vehicle codes. If you have trouble codes, you can simply clear them by using the selection beneath it. You're also able to check your emissions readiness status, which gives you an indication if you're going to pass your smog check before even going to the station. And that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to features on the iDash. With the iDash 1.8, you can input custom tire size and final drive ratios to be able to automatically correct your vehicle speed. This is incredibly handy for off-roaders who change their tire size. It's also configurable to show both English and metric units. And these can be set independently of each gauge, so you can view your boost in PSI in one gauge and in bar in the other. It's even got an ambient light sensor here, which allows the gauge to automatically dim at nighttime. We've thought about absolutely everything when we designed this gauge. But we've saved one of the best features for last, it's infinite expandability. With the Banks Bus Communication Network, the B-Bus, you can add a variety of different modules as you see fit. If you want more power, add the Banks Derringer Tuner to your iDash to crank up the boost and spin your tires up in third gear. If data is your thing, you can add a variety of plug and play pressure, temperature and frequency based sensors to your vehicle. No more wondering if your EGTs are too high or your trans is overheating while towing. Simply add a sensor to the iDash so you'll never be left in the dark. If you've got a turbocharged gas engine and you're running into knock issues, plug in our straight shot water meth controller to increase the octane of your fuel. And we're not stopping there. We've got many more Banks Bus devices in the pipeline, from power modules to control your light bar to wideband air fuel ratio modules. The system is future proof and the possibilities are limitless. As you can see, the iDash 1.8 is so much more than your average gauge. It's a full featured computer. To find out more, visit bankspower.com.